He might be right. I can't tell him that he wrong because I ain't the type of person that's going to break a child's spirit like that. That's true. That's you know true. what? Enough about me. It's time to get back serious, man. The black market is open. The black market is open. And J-O-N, we've been going crazy over here on this black market because I told you I know people that know people that know the people that I know. You see what I'm saying? So it go all the way around and come back. So when you walking through the black market and you done did your shopping, you done went, you got you something to eat, you done got your legal, all that situated, you went outside, got your blood work done, you had funnel cakes and coffee. You know, we have all type of interesting people stop through the black market and let us know what they got going on. And today is no different. Come on, man. I don't know if you've been asleep or if you know what's going on, but you know, I'm really big into the marketing game. That's why you see all, I'm marketing right now. So I called up one of the experts in the field, none other than my man Terrell D. <laughs> he happens to be an expert in the field of such. Mm. Trust me, I know this. Don't, don't worry about what I got going on. Just appreciate the people that I'm bringing through here. See, this whole purpose of this, too, mm -hmm. is to help educate J.O.N. about education. <laughs> He went to Tennessee, you know, they schools. Yeah, that's it's not family. It's not. What's right. up, Terrell? What's been What's up? up man? I'm good. I'm Welcome good. Welcome to the black market. Pleasure to be here. Oh man, all the time. Pleasure to be here. Holding it down. What's been up? Work, life, all of it, man. You got all these accounts. I got two pages of notes, man. <laughs> I'm shocked it's not three. Look at all this shit you got going they, on. They got it highlighted in yellow. Filmmaker. I love it. All of it. Make movies. You don't want NAACP awards. Yep. Come on, man. Motivational speaker. All of that. I ain't giving you no more credit on my head, man, because I feel like I ain't doing enough. How all this come about? So it started actually not wanting to be in corporate America. Work? Yep. What corporate America do to you, man? Nothing. I think more than anything, it wasn't in my spirit, man. I, I was an entrepreneur from... Knee high. Word. Had a barber shop in the basement. Used to cut lawns. I'm from Wisconsin, right? Black people do live in Wisconsin. Yeah, they do. A lot right? of them. Right? And so I used to shovel snow, snow blow, all of that. So it was about, you know, being self-sufficient. I got a twin sister, so I was always kind of having to figure it out for my, myself. Right. But then, you know, you go to college, you do what you're supposed to do, get a degree, get a job, get into corporate America. Once I got there, I was like, yeah, this ain't quite it. It, it felt restricted. I was like in IT and then uh, worked early. for, yeah, early. Bro, you missed all Super that early. money. No, no, I got all the money. No, 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 I didn't so miss any of it. But I'm I saying, you, you know what I'm talking about. There was a boom. I was, I was, was right in the middle money. of the boom. Okay, I was baby. right in the middle of the boom. See, I'm well versed. That's why they you let are. me do this. Yeah. Yeah, because IT, it wasn't it wasn't really hit like that at first. Then it hit real hard, no, real, hard. real hard. Now it's straight. But you know it ain't like no, it, it ain't, was. No, it ain't what it used to be. Thank you. Yeah, so I was back Thank in you. 1996, Ooh. 7. See, that's one right. 1999. Was, when see, Y2K. that's 99 was probably the peak of that shit. Yes, dude. people don't even know. People don't even know. Most people don't know. I know. Yeah. They so look, it was good. I just look like this, man. <laughs> I know some you shit. Know. So it was good. Life was good. Uh, I was doing well, but you know what? Every day, what happened? I would go home and my heart would hurt, like physically. I would feel pain Damn. because I was like, this ain't it for me. And so while I was at, I was at this company, this software company, I started my agency. It wasn't but four of us. And we, we didn't really know what we were doing, but I said, you know what? I wanted to do something new and different. So we stretched out as an entrepreneur. I put some money down and we started doing stuff. The key to it was I felt better. Right. Like cutting deals, negotiating things. And the reality of it was because I was what they call a passionpreneur, it wasn't like I was so anxious to get the money. I had the SAP software, I shouldn't have said them, but I had the money coming in from my software side. So I could just focus on doing the kind of business I wanted to do. And it worked out. I mean, it worked out so good that, I mean, the company grew super fast, and then we jumped into movies. 
with two of my frat brothers on my alpha. So with Will Packer and Rob Hardy, we That's did some movies. You know my boy Chico. I do. Then we uh, then we did some stuff with Tyler. Perry. You yeah. can't just drop that like we know Tyler like that. <laughs> then we did some with Tyler. You gotta say Perry. I gotta say Perry. So oh, we did man. some work with Tyler Perry. We handled all the CNN, Black in Americas. We did House of Pain, Meet the Brown. We started doing movies, Hand Over Fist, a big deal with Sony Pictures. Uh, six or seven films we did with them. Sixty-seven? Six or seven. Oh. And then it blew up. They let me put out a press release, and then it went to 300 films. And we did over 300 marketing campaigns. We launched uh, Power, Blackish, uh, Empire, Celebrity Apprentice, the agency of record for NBC Universal, and all of that was wonderful. But it, w it was wonderful, but as you get into it, you start seeing that there's more and bigger opportunity. But the key to it, like I tell everybody, is like you gotta become an expert at something. Like people gotta know you for something. And most people knew us because of film and television marketing. But then once it hit, we kind of began to cut over. But we cut over real high. So Walmart came in, then General Mills, AT&T. So it was all some of the biggest brands because they saw what we were doing in film and TV and they started giving us more and more deals. And it was good. It was good. So the company grew. Then I'm gonna tell you something special. And this is good for you to hear. So then, 2018, 2017, 2018, I was diagnosed with cancer. And it changed everything. Like, my mind went to spaghetti. Like, what do you, what do, you do? You think, like, I've done every, I've done it all, you know, I've accomplished my dreams. Now, the first point was, like, you know, what happens when you, you know, you got a dream. What happens when you hit your dream? Like, everything is popping. That happened in around 2014. Everything was popping. We, I, everything I wanted to accomplish, all the employees, the clients, we had hit all the right marks. And I was like, okay, what do we do next? And somebody told me, it's like, bro, you got to create a new dream. Like, if you, if you hit all those marks, your dream wasn't big enough. So you gotta start something else. You gotta do something else, something different. So that's why it says filmmaker and motivational speaker and philanthropist and tech entrepreneur. Like I started doing other stuff because I was like, this ain't enough just to say, okay, I, I, I accomplished this. I gotta move to the next. But then, like I said, 2018, I was diagnosed with cancer. Totally messed me up. My whole mind and body was like, okay, what do I do now, God? Like, I did everything you wanted me to do. I, you know, I've been married. I was married, had two girls, beautiful daughters. I want, my only desire was to walk them girls down the aisle. Like, I love my wife. Don't get me wrong, you know, she's great. But my girls, I was like, oh, man. So that was a, that was a turning point. That's when you stop and evaluate all levels of life. So everybody on the show today got a wife. Everybody got a wife. Catch up. No. <laughs> well, yeah, you remember you said that. Oh, yeah, because when I do get a wife, I'm old. My wife, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Damn. My day is coming. And I've been married 20, 22 years. Girl? I've been with my wife 31 years. 31 years. 31 years. Damn. That's crazy. What's, like, the, real what's talk. the trick? Uh, number one, you better have some good game. Number two, don't try to give yourself. That I got, credit. I got. I'm That's giving the honor. I'm gonna take that credit. Here you got good game, young blood. No, no, come on now. <laughs> but more than anything, you know, you got to find you the right one. Yeah. And you I found me the right you one. Believe. Your game. All day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this game, long, long as it's working, this game. Long as it's working. As long as, you're right. But no, nah, I'm happy, man. We've tell been the married a long brothers, time. Since you brought it up, tell the young brothers who might be watching this how you, how you might could possibly tell she could be the one. Okay, that's good. That's a good question. So, number one, for me, for me, we were equally yoked. What I believed, she believed. Number one, we were oh. equally yoked. <laughs> e equally yoked. Yeah. Number two, like, he had my back, but it was, it was the hardest, like, 
I got you, I ever felt that she was constantly pushing me forward and she never would let me slip back. And that meant something to me. Because other people, they concerned about, you know, what they gonna get out of a situation, how they see things going. She was like, uh-uh, I'm with you, brother. You make that decision, all right, I'm gonna support you. Now, she'd ask questions. Every woman gonna ask questions. Okay, how this gonna work, boom, boom, boom. But she was like, okay, all right, I see you. I got you, let's go, let's get it. And that felt good because you don't always, you know, you want a cheerleader, but you want somebody that really got your back. Not somebody that's just over there rah, 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 but somebody that's gonna sit with you in the hard times and the good times, right? Right. And then I would say, finally, I mean, I couldn't imagine life without her, right? Like, I started looking at her differently, like, I don't know what this would be if you weren't here. Gee, you better. After 31 years with the same woman, trust me, you ain't ready for them streets. Oh, yeah, th yeah, you got one. <laughs> you ain't heard nothing about what these new ones doing. I don't, I don't need to you know. You need a Gatorade to be outside these days. Hell, it is hell. Ain't nobody doing good. Rappers <laughs> even losing they women. I mean, they rich. It don't matter. Man, it don't matter. It used to be about the money. No. No, nah, it mm -mm. don't matter. Nah, nah. They talk real bad, and they don't get tired. <laughs> Be up all night drinking Hennessy by the bar, smoking hookah, rolling big fat ass backwood. I mean, pills. <laughs> they want to do perks. They can dance. They only drink water. I don't know where they came from, OG. I'm telling you. I'm good on that. I'm telling you, it's, it's, you got to be built for this. Enjoy. I, I, you look at this. Ain't nobody happy. <laughs> Nobody in here. It's him. It's him. He good. His kids look exactly like him. I'm with That's you, Dad. You know they happy. Over I'm there. happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what can they get in touch with you and, and, and catch up on some of these things you got going on? Well, I got a lot going on, but I mean, my company is Liquid Soul. Go liquidsoul.com. G O liquidsoul.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, IG, uh, LinkedIn. Terrell Whitley. Um, you on there? I'm on there. Because no, you know, you, I'm on there. No, I'm you on say there. You've been married 31 years. Your page probably private. You take you <laughs> eight nine months to accept. Hey, I'm Terrell, man. We trying to get that in for. Hey, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on, on there. Young blood, I got a company to run. No, I'm on there. I'm on there, and I'm accessible. Like right. I try to, I try That's to connect people. That's what I was people. gonna say though, because like I had to get that game from you, because you said you had some good game. I saw you. Yeah. I see, you. that is some good game. I know the young brothers, and they gonna, they might catch it, they might not. Yeah. Somebody need to hear. It, so I but, wanted to make sure. But you I, got I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that years ago, two of the people that worked with you were my interns. Were. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't have let them go. Well. Yeah, they, they work, some they of them, plus, one man. of them did it to himself. <laughs> Ryan? No, Chad. Uh, Chad, yeah, well, you just Chad. So Chad and Ryan both uh, came through Liquid Soul. They were part of our internship competition. A little bit of story, uh, Chad was the first intern to get fired. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, that's what I've been telling Chad his whole career. If it wasn't for me bailing him out, he would have never made it in the workforce. I don't know. He, but you know what? Chad exceeded, he's the first one to get fired. He's probably the most exceptional one that we've ever had come through the yes, program. It, I don't know what happened. It's like overnight he changed. He went from ain't shit employee <laughs> to a great <laughs> executive handling business and executing. I've known Chad since he was 17, 18 yeah. years old. First job we worked at, he wasn't shit. <laughs> Second job, he wasn't shit. I was like, oh God, bro, I'm not giving you no more job. He good today. Nah, he good. No, nah, and Ryan, Ryan was the most creative. So Ryan uh, came into our internship. His submission video was a karaoke video. I would never forget it. He did karaoke to introduce himself to the entire company. And everybody came to my office and was like, this is so horrible, but we love it. <laughs> it is the worst karaoke, but we love the fact that he put himself out there like that. He ain't know him no better. <laughs> I promise you, at that point in his life, he was just—he probably did. Shit. He probably was going off his instincts, but he it worked. Trying shit. It worked for him. It hey, worked. He go, he go crazy. I believe it. Missed the follow up.
So shout out to Chad and Ryan for not being good at their first job. <laughs> Had they been good at that job, they would have never made it over there. Man, I'm so glad y'all had them first and not the other way around. Because, <laughs> man. They were, it's destiny. They were always going to be here, bro. Good. I appreciate you giving them my opportunity. Absolutely. Because if it weren't for me and you, <laughs> I think they still be with Steve Hart. Yeah, I doubt it. I know they would. I love it. Steve meaner than me. <laughs> he meaner than me, too. He way meaner than me. Yeah. But I appreciate you, man. So we're going to make sure. Drop the social media one more time so they can get Yeah, the at Terrell Whitley. Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I don't do Twitter anymore. I'm, I'm over Twitter. Any advice you got for the next generation of, of Terrell Willis coming yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, number one, have some high integrity. Number two, be accountable at all times. And number three, be excellent at everything that you do. Like, that's it right there. Yeah. What's up? Hey, Jay Lynn. Black Market is open, baby. Terrell Willis. Black Market. 85 South Show.